The 2022 Game Awards was quite possibly the best one we've seen yet. We got eight minute long speeches, video games galore, non-offensively bad performances, and real life Souls invaders. But the most interesting thing about this event to me was Ken Levine's reveal of his brand new game, Judas. Now, when I say that I have watched this trailer a million times, I mean I have watched this trailer a million times. After making my interpreting Bioshock video, I delved into what we could see next from Levine, as well as Ghost Story's stance in the video game industry. Days later, I see the logo appear on my screen and I immediately leaned forward so that way I could pay attention. So my question to you is, what do we know about this game? Who is attached to the project? What has been speculated? You know, let's get into the main meat of what Judas may be. Now, not a lot is known about this game, but what is known is that it's been in development for a very long time, like 2014. And it is also set to release on modern hardware, meaning that we haven't seen a Levine game since the seventh generation. Upon inception, apparently this game has gone under numerous reworks, revisions, and reboots. So it seems that Levine has kind of learned his lesson in revealing a game too early. That was one of the main major points of contention when Bioshock Infinite released was how, how different it was compared to the trailers that we originally saw. But according to Levine, he wanted to reveal this game as close to release as possible, that way the primary reboots of the game would have already been made and not disclosed to the public. At the end of Irrational's life cycle and the inception of Ghost Story, Levine was a speaker at GDC 2014 where he led a talk called Narrative Legos, to which he focused on the concept of building replayable stories out of 100 tiny pieces. This is interesting considering Levine's prior work, which has been very linear with little to no room for choice and even fake choice in some instances. Levine has remarked that he's reluctant to make quote unquote bigger games, and that he wants to focus on more smaller, replayable games. He remarked how the would you kindly scene from Bioshock 1 only really works once. Now, unfortunately, this discussion didn't necessarily relate to Judas. It is explained that this talk was more of a higher level of video game design developers should strive for. So from the sounds of it, Judas is going to be a lot more non-linear than Levine's prior work. I don't necessarily expect his narrative Legos concept to go in full force, but we'll just have to see. Fast forward to 2017 and we hear from Levine again. This time he's citing one of his main sources of inspiration for his new game, namely being Middle Earth Shadows of Mordor. More specifically, the Nemesis system. For those who might not know what the Nemesis system is, allow me to explain. Essentially, the system takes random enemies that the player defeats and has certain ones come back to try and enact revenge several times over until one enemy becomes an unscripted reoccurring villain throughout the entire game. This provides the player with a completely unique experience as they face off against their own personal antagonist alongside set bosses the game already has in store for you. Now, if you have any doubts about this being in Judas, just know that Zeb Waddell, who is the senior producer of Ghost Story Games, was the senior producer of Middle Earth Shadows of Mordor, as well as Shadows of War. I imagine this wasn't by accident. I wouldn't be surprised if Ken sought this guy out himself, but I'll get into how this integrates into Judas in just a moment. Another thing to mention is that Judas was supposed to release much, much earlier. A division of Take-Two Interactive alongside some former members of Irrational said that they were supposed to release a small game in 2017. This project is said to be a sci-fi shooter set in a mysterious space station where three factions would respond to a player's actions. But the project's scope was seemingly bigger than anticipated, especially for a 30-man team, one of the most difficult facets being a really complicated dialogue system that would morph based on the player's choice. The last thing I'll mention about this game is the fact that it has had a troubled development. According to Ghost Story's website, Judas is entirely self-developed and self-published, so Ken has had more than enough time to work on this game at his own pace. However, in January of 2022, Jason Schreier reports that Levine's new game is in quote-unquote development hell. According to Bloomberg, part of the delay stems from Levine's mercurial management style and his perfectionism. Like previous reports from his time at Irrational, it describes a place where projects would suddenly get overhauled or scrapped after a few months of work. Obviously, this doesn't bode well with the average video game developer, but considering the fact that you are working with the best and the brightest of the games industry, well, should be expected. So as an overview, before we even saw the trailer, we knew a couple of things. The game will not be as linear as Levine's previous work, a possible nemesis system could be involved, and the game is set to feature in a space station akin to the likes of System Shock 2. On top of that, it's said that this game may feature extensive dialogue options where you tailor your own story. So where does that leave us? Well, let's get into the main course, shall we? Okay, I lied. We're not getting into the trailer quite yet. I do believe it is important to go into the definition first. 
Judas is a single-player narrative first-person shooter developed by Ghost Story Games, a studio led by Ken Levine, creative director of System Shock 2, Bioshock, and Bioshock Infinite. A disintegrating starship, a desperate escape plan, you are the mysterious and troubled Judas. Your only hope for survival is to make or break alliances with your worst enemies. Will you work together to fix what you broke, or will you leave it to burn? And then the game's tagline, fix what you broke. Now, what can we learn from this alone? Well, a couple of things actually. We know our main goal, escape. Pretty simple, but I imagine it's not going to be so simple once we play the game itself. The main character of the game is revealed to us to be named Judas. Interesting name considering Judas Iscariot was a disciple and one of the original 12 apostles of Jesus Christ. This I imagine is intentional. According to all four canonical gospels, Judas betrayed Jesus and the Sanhedrin in the Garden of the Gethsemane by kissing him in the cheek and addressing him as master to reveal his identity in the darkness to the crowd who had come to arrest him. His name is often used synonymously with betrayal or treason. I'll get to how this correlates in a second. Our only hope as Judas is to make or break alliances with our worst enemies. Now, looking at the trailer, we can get a pretty good idea who these enemies are. Speaking of trailer, let's finally get into it. Upon our first look at the game itself, we see our main protagonist, Judas, limping towards the screen, bruised and battle-scarred. Judas addresses us as the player by stating what we already know. The ship is dying. And my only way out of here is with one of them. Upon the reveal of Judas, I immediately got Elizabeth vibes from our protagonist. Not because they are similar characters, I mean, they might be, I don't know. But Elizabeth is the most prominent female Bioshock character, so I immediately drew comparisons. Also, they sound similar too. I don't think it's the same voice actor, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was. However, primarily, it was because of Ghost Stories slash Irrational's distinct art style. These games dating back to Bioshock don't necessarily look realistic, rather they look cartoonish with realistic undertones. The stylized facial expressions, big eyes, solid hair. If the Ghost Stories logo didn't appear before we saw Judas, I would have recognized the art style to be reminiscent of Irrational. The camera in this scene is placed very peculiarly. We are facing out of the window, while in the reflection we see Judas approach from behind, dropping an axe and placing her hand on the window, seamlessly switching our perspective to hers. Outside of the window, we see a bright blue light emanating from what I assume to be a planet. Perhaps it's a star, or maybe it's a cataclysmic explosion. I imagine this might be the reason for I need to escape the ship, or at the very least, one of the reasons. Upon putting her hand on the window, we see an aspect of her hand that is quite interesting, this glowing circular thing. Now later, we see that the circular thing is responsible for the powers we use in-game, but more on that in a moment. We get a good look at some of the characters we will meet in Judas. First up is a sheriff looking dude putting on a hat. Three things of note here, one, he does not possess the same hand thing Judas does, specifically on his right hand. Later in the trailer though, we see that he does have one in his left. Secondly, his badge has some sort of wording on it, but unfortunately it is cut off here. Later in the trailer though, we are able to see what it actually says, Rosenberg. Now this could mean one of two things. This name could be in correlation to Julius and Ethel Rosenberg, American citizens who were convicted of spying on behalf of the Soviet Union. Another possibility perhaps has something to do with Rosenberg, Texas. Considering his appearance and the fact that sheriff badges usually don't have the sheriff's name on the badge, I'm more prone to think that this character is connected to Rosenberg, Texas in some way or another. Perhaps it's where he's from, perhaps this game has something to do with time travel, who knows. But it should also be noted that Rosenberg could be the place in which he occupies and governs on the ship. Lastly, we get a good look at his faction, these robotic horses. This one specifically is in a cowboy uniform and possesses a rifle. Next we see a synthetic woman with bright pink hair in front of a statue. The statue depicts two lovers engaging within a kiss. What I find most notable about this character is her obvious deformities. She's missing an arm, clothing is tattered, and her skin is peeling. In her good hand, she also seems to possess the plasmid thing like the other characters. Also in her good hand, she seems to be holding a rose. Now, this game has lots of iconography towards love, as to what this could mean is beyond me. Finally, we see our last character, a dark-skinned female bald head with what seems to be tons of cybernetic enhancements. From the looks of it, she also might be a robot, but it is possible that she is just a cyborg. In fact, it's entirely possible every character, including Judas, is a synthetic, but we can't know for sure. The lady doesn't seem to possess the same plasmid capsule the other characters do. Maybe hers is hidden more discreetly, or perhaps she will use alternative firepower, who knows. In the next scene, we cut back to Judas, who seems to be shocked about the bright blue light, as well as a large meteor approaching her. Up next, we see more imagery pertaining to lovers. What's interesting about this, though, is the tagline eat the cookie. Perhaps these cookies are drugged to sedate the inhabitants of the ship, or maybe there's another purpose behind them. At the very least, they must be sinister. And over this, we see another horse robot, this time being shot to death by a dying human. 
Nothing more of note here other than a plaque above, but we can't make out what it says. The next scene we see is with the sheriff, and we get a good look at a poster in the background. Authentic. What am I doing to protect Baby C? This poster seems to be pretty integral to the overall story, very reminiscent to the Lamb and the False Shepherd iconography seen within Bioshock Infinite. Perhaps Judas is Baby C? The baby appears to be blonde, maybe she betrays these people because she was supposed to live up to something greater, who knows. In this scene though, we also get a small transparent robot attacking the player, only for Judas to use some sort of power on it. However, we also see another poster in the background. Individuality, be your unique. In the poster, we see a variety of people with statements on their shirts. Follow orders, love the mission, and eat the cookie. Very ominous indeed. After that, we see this gigantic robotic dog lying down and opening its head for us, the player, to load onto. Towards the left, we see another poster, but unfortunately we can't make out the words. Righteous, maybe? In the background, we see a transit sign. Social credit greater than 1,000. Pilgrims only, violators prohibited. Now, perhaps this game will have something to say about the social credit system seen within China's authoritative government. For those who may not know, China's social credit system is a combination of government and business surveillance that, that gives citizens scores that can possibly restrict the ability for individuals to take actions such as purchasing plane tickets, acquiring property, taking loans, going to college, etc. One thing is for sure, this definitely isn't Rapture. From what we can see, this space station here portrays a very impressive environment. Next up, we see a bald lady once again, but before she reveals herself, it seems to be that she is pixelated. Odd way to conceal yourself, but I dig it. She opens up this blue egg thing seemingly for the player to interact with. Perhaps it's a shop, but most likely it is a crafting table, which leads me to believe that this game will include some form of weapon slash plasmid modification. Also upon the egg opening, we see a multitude of things. A pistol with a giant suppressor, an SMG, tons of bullets, a stuffed animal, and a mushroom. Perhaps this mushroom is an upgrade for our plasmid, but who's to say? Now here we find Judas in the bathroom unloading her plasmid capsule. Unlike the Bioshock games which expelled powers supernaturally, these seem to shoot powers cybernetically. In the background we look at two more posters, but these posters are actually in higher quality on Judas's website, entitled, Be Grateful to What's Given to You, and Perverted, Love is Toxic. On the entitled poster, we see a woman eating what appears to be a weird alien crustacean of sorts. Now this is in stark contrast to the Eat the Cookie posters which we saw previously, so either we are in a completely different area, or something even stranger is going on. The perverted poster once again reinforces the lover symbolism. The last thing of note is Judas's tattoo, a paw print. Now Jack, as we know, has the chain tattoos in Bioshock, and Booker possesses the AD letters on his right hand. Both of these markings are pretty integral to the plot of both games, which makes me wonder what the significance of the paw print is. The only other animal we see are horses and a giant dog, but these are both synthetic. Another thing of note is the fact that it's not a perfect paw. One of the toes seems to be bigger than the rest. Following up, we see dead bodies in space, all the while a giant purple planet is behind them. Fortunately, there isn't much to go off of here other than it's pretty safe to say that the majority of the space station is dead. But I will say that I do find it strange that almost every other human we see is a bald man. Not quite sure what to make of that, to be honest. We see a new character, similar to Judas, grabbing a gun and shooting towards us. She is very obviously angry, however behind her there is a moving limb or something. I can't quite make it out, but for a split second we do see purple. Perhaps it's a squid creature? Next up we find Judas in a cell, with nothing but cookies surrounding her. She is released by a silhouette, but we do not know who they are exactly. But these cookies are for sure an ominous presence. The pink haired robot lady returns, this time teleporting out of nowhere and possessing a turret to use against the horse enemies. Perhaps she and the others will act as companions depending on who we will side with. We also see this awesome crossbow with a chain string on it. For sure a makeshift weapon, this wasn't manufactured in a factory. Also in the background we see a bright neon sign titled Butcher. What's fascinating is that there is a rubber hose animated slug being chopped in half, most likely one of the primary foods to be found in this space station. Lastly we come back to Judas for the final time, recognizing her situation in either A accepting her fate, B gaining some sort of satisfaction, or C is bracing herself for the blast. Maybe it's all three? I don't know, but what is apparent is that her mood definitely changes when the meteor approaches, and she looks pretty pissed off. Then we get this awesome animated graphic with the logo as well as the timeline, very reminiscent of System Shock. But let's focus on the final line here. Fix what you broke. This is a callback to the Burial at Sea DLC for Bioshock Infinite, where Elizabeth states that she needs to fix what she broke. I need to go back to fix what I broke. 
Another thing tying Judas to Elizabeth in my opinion. The last thing I want to focus on is the song used within the trailer. It is a sea shanty entitled Leave Her Johnny. I'll display the lyrics here. The general theme of the song is that sailors are fed up with ship life and they want to head back to land. Everything the sailors had wanted to accomplish is now complete and they just want an exit. Perfect song to soundtrack this trailer, obviously we can draw parallels here within the inhabitants of the ship seeking their escape from space to what we would hope to be land. But coming back to the timeline, this seems to define the main premise of what Judas is. So let's detail everything that we know. Keep in mind, this is my prediction, and it should be taken with a grain of salt. I don't necessarily expect this to be true, I don't necessarily expect it to be entirely false either, but you know, here we go. Judas is a first-person Bioshock-like video game where you portray a female character who needs to escape from a crumbling space station after already cutting her losses. The game will be a primarily non-linear game, giving the player a freedom that most likely hasn't been explored in any other game we've seen before. I imagine it is up to us as Judas to choose who we want to side with, and who we want to make our enemy, via a more concise nemesis system that will be integral to the story. The game will most likely feature multiple endings based on what we the player did. Say for example using the cowboy looking dude to further our own means of escape, it might result in a quote unquote bad ending where we technically lose the most. This is pure speculation I know, but I feel very confident in saying that this game is gonna be big, you know? There is nothing quite like Bioshock. There is nothing quite like Bioshock Infinite. And quite frankly, I believe that there is gonna be nothing quite like Judas. Arguably the most interesting thing about this game is the fact that it's gonna be on modern gen only, not on PS4, not on Xbox One. Now this might be really dumb of me to do, but if I were to pick a game to be blindly excited about, it would be Judas. But yeah, that's whatever. Thank you so much for joining me. If you have any other theories, comments, speculation, or just want to leave a comment, please, please, please feel free to drop in the comments. I would love to discuss more about this game. Also, if you would like to consider subscribing, that would be pretty cool too, I guess, you know. But other than that, this is Landon Hansen signing off, just reminding you to go outside. Go outside. When's the last time you've been outside, huh? It's snowing out. Go enjoy the snow. Go make a snow angel. When is the last time you made a snow angel, huh? Go on. Leave. Go.